Thank you, Benji. Maybe I should go switch off. Actually, switch on my video. Uh, my presentation is titled Social Accountability in a Closing Civic Space Challenges and Strategies for Citizen Action for Water in Tanzania. Uh, I will be talking of uh, the ways uh, citizens uh, exact accountability in a context where the civic space is closing uh, and at the outline shows, uh, I begin by introduction, then I focus on the objectives and conceptual issues. Later I talk uh, about the Tanzania political context and we look at the civic space, then we will move on to see the findings regarding the challenges, the opportunities and the strategies. And then I conclude by drawing some implications from the findings. Uh, social accountability approaches uh, presume a democratically supportive environment. But when you look at the context in many African countries, such environment rarely exists. Now the question becomes, uh, how civil groups in such environment exact accountability for water? What challenges uh, do they face? Uh, what are the opportunities uh, they exploit to foster citizen action for water? Uh, so this uh, study aimed at identifying effective strategies for citizens' action for water in a constraining social accountability environment, in this case in Tanzania. Uh, yeah, it also aims at ascertaining opportunities and challenges for citizen action uh, in a closing civic environment, in this case, Tanzania. And the significance of it is that uh, it generates evidence that uh, can inform accountability strategies in a restrictive political context uh, like uh, that of Tanzania. Next. So uh, this study draws from five civil groups and one civil society network which uh, are involved in implementing WASH or water resource management accountability interventions in, in Tanzania. And data we are collected through interviews uh, by key informants and documentary evidence. So this is the ongoing project. Uh, it is supported by Water Witness through Accountability for Water program. And it's a part of a uh, uh, broader project, which I'm now engaged in, titled Social Accountability and Water Governance Challenges in Tanzania. Next. So let me start by talking about uh, closing civic space. What do we mean? In, in, in this context, and this study, I view a closing civic space as increasing government crackdown on media, civil society organizations, and opposition political activities. It can take the forms of enactment of stringent policy and regulatory framework that uh, constrains uh, the operations of uh, civil groups and the media as well as opposition political parties. It can also take the form of banning of political of opposition uh, parties' political activities, uh, but also can take the form of uh, harassment and intimidation of government critics. Uh, this also uh, uh, can involve arrest or disappearance. Uh, of government critics, uh, naming and shaming uh, of 
those involved uh, in exacting accountability, uh, but also with holding bank accounts of the uh, ASA organizations or individuals uh, which uh, are pressurizing the government to take action on certain issues affecting the community. Uh, so uh, this is uh, our conceptualization of a closing civic space. Next. Let us now look at the political context in Tanzania. Tanzania is just a nascent democracy. It gained independence in 1961, and four years later, uh, like many other African countries, moved into a, a one-party state. And that went on uh, up to 1992, when the process of political liberalization began. So uh, the democratization process in Tanzania has not been able to create a, a consolidating form of democracy. And uh, uh, some analysts have described Tanzania in various ways when they look at the democratic architecture of the country and the way it operates. Uh, for example, uh, Makulilo, uh, 2008, views Tanzania as a de facto one-party state, that although Tanzania is officially multi-party, the way it operates, uh, the relationship between state organs and the ruling party organs uh, uh, shows that it's uh, a de facto one-party. So that constrains uh, the environment for those uh, groups which are outside the state on the way they organize and exert accountability uh, to the party, to the party officials and government in general. Uh, Freedom House uh, describes uh, Tanzania as patri free when you look at the civil liberties and political rights, Tanzania is among many countries which still uh, fall into that category. And the recent research on uh, democracy and the political uh, landscape in the country view Tanzania as an electoral autocracy. Next. Next. So uh, when you look at the civic space and social accountability in Tanzania, uh, Tanzania has been experiencing expansion and contraction of civic space over time. And when civil society organizations, the media become vocal, the uh, government respond by closing civic space in subsequent uh, faith. Uh, if, for example, uh, you look at the early years of political liberalization between 1992 to 1995, there was uh, expansion of civic space. But uh, uh, when President Mkapa came in in 1995 and 2005, uh, the civic space uh, was a uh, cross, so there was a contraction. Uh, again, we, we experienced uh, some sort of expansion between 2005 and 2015 during President Kikwete's regime. Um, but later, uh, after the 2015 election, uh, uh, in which elected uh, President Magufuli into, into power, there was a serious contraction of regime, I mean, of civic space. So when we look at the uh, findings from studies uh, which have shown the way civic space has been contracting and the way uh, accountability, social accountability uh, incidents have been uh, growing or decreasing, you can see that where the regimes are tightened the space, even the incidence of uh, social accountability declined. Next slide. 
Now, let us look at this study, I mean, this uh, graph uh, by Kirian. This, this is a graph taken from the study by uh, Professor Benedetta Kirian. Uh, she was trying to look at the incidence of social accountability uh, from 1992 to 2008. And as you can see, between 1992 to 1995, that was the early years of uh, liberalization because Tanzania had its first multi-party election in 1995. So you can see the uh, rate of incidence of social accountability grew significantly. But uh, from there uh, to 2005, uh, the civic space contracted. There was excessive use of instrument of coercion uh, by President Mukapa's regime to suppress citizens' demand. And you can see the number of uh, uh, incidents of uh, citizens' uh, demands expressed in terms of popular strikes and demonstrations declined significantly. Uh, and uh, Professor Kirian uh, extracted these findings from newspaper reporting. So he was trying to look at the newspapers uh, and analyzing the, in, the incidents where uh, which we are involving uh, popular strikes or demonstrations where citizens trying to express their concerns. But again, you can see from 2005, uh, when President Kikweta uh, came in, the incidence of social accountability started to rise again. And uh, the reason is that uh, the civic space uh, was relatively expanding uh, after uh, uh, Mukapa's regime and when Kikwete came into power. Next. Now, uh, when we look at the, the other evidence, Yes, right, please. Previous slide. Okay. Now, when you, yes, okay, next. Now, when you look at the civic space between 2015 and 2021, uh, you see extreme shrinking. And this was after President Magufuli was elected into power. Uh, the reason uh, is that during this period, there was enactment or amendment of regulatory framework that governs media, political parties, and civil society activities. And these amendments or new enactments aimed at tightening uh, the space. Uh, the, key rules or regulations which we are enacted or amended uh, as they appear in your screen. And you can find uh, a detailed analysis about their implications as far as civic space, political and civil liberties concerned from uh, the International Center for Non-Profit Law, the uh, they did uh, a detailed analysis uh, of most of these roles, so you can get the details and more insights from that uh, website. Uh, but also there was reports of harassment, torture, disappearance of government critics, etc. Now the consequence was that there was a restriction of freedom of expression, but again, uh, restrictions in a peaceful assembly and freedom of association. Now, when we look at the other evidence uh, from the World Bank, uh, shows that the, during the President uh, Magufuli's uh, regime, Tanzania dropped significantly in a, in its performance in terms of governance indicators as shown in next slide. 
Next. Next uh, slide, please. Yeah. As can you see the right slide now? Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I can see. Okay. Yeah. As you can see from this uh, slide in your screen, uh, this is the effect of uh, closing space, uh, despite the fact that government effectiveness uh, declined, uh, the voice didn't rise. So though uh, the trend of uh, closing civic space uh, uh, started in the late uh, years of President Kikwete, but there was a sharp, uh, a sharp uh, increase in the civic space, as you can see, uh, in terms of decline in voice and accountability, but also in terms of rule of law, etc. So this is uh, the period during uh, President Magufuli's regime. Next. Yeah, uh, there are various studies which uh, have uh, tried to report uh, the incidence of closing civic space and uh, showing evidences. Uh, uh, one of those is Dan Paget, 2017, Reguan Human Rights Center. This is uh, a local NGO which does uh, uh, analysis of human rights uh, status every year and publish the report. So it's a report of 2020 uh, documents incidents of uh, uh, harassment, uh, disappearance, uh, torture, arrest of government critics and etc. But also Yakuza inside 2020, uh, uh, Yakuza uh, is uh, executive director of one of NGOs, Twaweza, is among the people who uh, faced uh, uh, government wrath after publishing uh, a research report which shows that uh, the popularity of President Magufuli was declining. So uh, since then, uh, he was uh, questioned, arrested, questioned, and had his passport detained. Human rights also reports those incidents. There are also reports from newspapers, for example, the Monanch newspaper, which is a local uh, fabric, reports uh, the closing of the bank accounts of one of the civil society organizations, Tanzania Human Rights Defenders Coalition, uh, which was uh, closed in August 2020, and it was uh, opened uh, after President Samia Suhassan came to power in 2021. Next. Now, uh, Let us now look at these challenges, given uh, the context, how has the closing civic space affected citizens' action? Uh, uh, there have been several challenges uh, as far as uh, citizens' action is concerned. Uh, one is access of information. It has been difficult to access information. Uh, those. Uh, who we are interviewed from civil society organizations. They say uh, the things were not as usual uh, as it used to be when they make requests, let's say, to access certain information from the government. Uh, there was uh, some raise, but also it was difficult to access some of the information until you go extremized. But also in obtaining research, permits. One of the CSO had uh, its research permit cancelled uh, on reasons which we are not explained, but also it became very, very difficult for many of the CSOs to access 
uh, to obtain research funds from government authorities. Uh, the bureaucracy was tightened, but also in publicizing research evidence. You know, the way civil society do the advocacy work, uh, they, if you are doing, for example, school wash, and if it's the school, you would like to take photos of those unimproved toilets, facilities, and use them as evidence for advocacy. Uh, doing that during uh, President Magufuli regime was uh, not 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 easy because uh, government uh, was interpreting that as we are trying to incite uh, incite uh, uh, violence. You make people react, take arm against their government, etc. So uh, those are some of the challenges. But also there was. Uh, widening civil society and media divide. Uh, the media uh, was somewhat reluctant to report uh, some evidence, uh, I mean, from the civil society organization, especially when those evidences uh, are very critical and they aim or they look at the way they can be interpreted as they're embarrassing to the government. But also uh, uh, the closing civic space affected inter CSO cooperation. Uh, some CSOs uh, which uh, applies uh, a confrontational approach uh, could not easily get cooperation from other CSOs. So uh, CSOs uh, avoid to associate themselves with one of their, uh, of, I mean, with another uh, organization which may be uh, seem to be uh, very critical and which have been uh, uh, has attracted a negative uh, perception from, from the government. There was also limited government cooperation uh, and some of the planned activities uh, were not done, etc. So uh, despite uh, these uh, challenges and this was a challenging environment, CSOs managed to push citizens' water agenda. Now the question is uh, uh, what did they do? and what opportunity did they exploit and how. Uh, so looking at the opportunities, uh, uh, citizens used it to, to push uh, water accountability agenda. Uh, one is the government policy and legal processes. Uh, in Tanzania, the good thing is that the government uh, policy processing and the government lawmaking process provides opportunity for stakeholder involvement. Uh, there is no way, for example, uh, a ministry would table a policy uh, to the cabinet secretaries if it does not include stakeholders in use. So because of that, uh, CSOs, uh, we are consulted whenever government wants to, to, to make policies on certain matters. So they come invited as stakeholders to, to, to give their views. So they use that opportunity. But uh, CSOs are uh, uh, exploited uh, very well the opportunity of public hearing, which is provided through the lawmaking process. So, uh, and this was easy because they have established a good relationship with the MPs. So even when the a bill, a government bill is tabled under certificate of urgency, civil society will still be tipped by uh, MPs to table their views before the parliamentary committee. So they used uh, these opportunities very well. Uh, one of the case in point was uh, when the government was trying to, was uh, creating the uh, 
I mean, was enacting the law, we know it famous as Ruasa law, the law which is about water supply and sanitation in, 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 in Tanzania. But also the civil societies use the sector programs. Uh, in, in, in Tanzania, the water sector programs provide uh, opportunity or official pro platforms for environment of stakeholders in, in, in planning, but also in assessing uh, sector performance. So uh, some of the CSOs are, are even chairing or leading uh, technical working groups. So they also participate through uh, a joint water review. So they use these opportunities uh, to advocate for citizens' concern. But another opportunity is coordinated in national level advocacy. In Tanzania, uh, civil society organizations uh, in water sector are well coordinated. They have uh, a sanitation and a water network known as Tawasanet, and uh, it has uh, built its reputation uh, in the government. So it is easy through this uh, organization uh, to push a coordinated uh, agenda to the government. Next. So how do they exert accountability? But given the environment, uh, civil society in Tanzania have adopted a non-confrontational approach to advocacy. And in this case, they prefer face-to-face -face engagement to visit government authorities, uh, uh, argue their case. Uh, they operate in an environment where they are not supposed to expose the government problems in the media. So any approach that aims at embarrassing government in a, in a Tanzania context, or which can be interpreted by government as embarrassing, uh, is very difficult uh, to, 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 to operate in, in our context. Otherwise, uh, civil societies will be, or are viewed, uh, will be viewed as agents uh, or foreign agents, or the agents of the opposition, etc. So they try to avoid uh, such kind of approaches that will make them perceived as threat to the government or that aims at pointing fingers at the government. So such, uh, in that case, uh, such strategies like uh, media-based public awareness uh, campaigns uh, may not be helpful in the context. Uh, so uh, another strategy they use is to, to make effective use of uh, official platforms. I've mentioned technical working groups and joint water sector reviews, but also public hearing. So through this, uh, they can, they do solve the problem jointly with the government and the, the actions are legitimized. Next. Next. Now, uh, in terms of uh, implications, what do these findings suggest? Uh, from the observations uh, in Tanzania, uh, it is very, very important that uh, water sector development processes provide room for civil society participation. Now, uh, during the process of designing water sector development programs, the role of civil society need to be recognized and included. The good thing in Tanzania is that uh, the donor signed a memorandum of understanding with the government, which uh, require uh, civil society to take part. Now, if that uh, memorandum of 
understanding is not there. And if civil society organizations uh, are not incorporated in water sector development programs, uh, they are likely to be uh, to lack opportunity to voice citizens' concern in a situation where the civic space crosses and the importance of uh, citizen involvement or civil society participation in, in sector designs is that uh, first of all, the actions are legitimized because they are part and parcel of the sector of the water sector development program, but also uh, the government commitment will be there because it knows that these are uh, formally uh, recognized actors within the water governance framework. So those who are responsible to, to influencing the designs of uh, water sector development strategies, programs, they need to make sure that civil society are mentioned uh, or recognized as uh, important stakeholders uh, which need to be encoded. Uh, another implication is that uh, given the context, uh, social accountability interventions in Tanzania needed to target uh, or to aim at creating government willingness. And this is costly because you need the strategies which they use, they conduct workshops, seminars, they train civil society, etc. So this is a costly and unfortunately we find that uh, some uh, donor uh, who finance the activities of civil society organizations uh, do not or may not prefer uh, such kind of of uh, operation where civil society uh, invites uh, head seminars, uh, pay officials some allowances, whatever. But if you don't do that in Tanzania context, you are likely to face challenges because the avenues of creating the interface between the civil society and the and the and the government will be limited so any design of of intervention needed to take into account on how do we bring the government uh, in the activities of the civil society so that to create by government by uh, since the national coordination of, of civil society organization seem to uh, have played important role. There is a need for strengthening 